Hi, my name is Neil Narayanan. I chose David Stern, who was the NBA commissioner from 1984 to 2014 because I love the game of basketball. According to the Pacers general manager, Chad Buchanan, David Stern had the most impact on, quote, turning our league into an extremely profitable venture for all of its owners and players. He turned our product into a global enterprise with a large amount of revenue for owners and players. However, it wasn't always the case. The 1970s was very different. The NBA during the 1970s was, well, it was pretty rough. Many reporters and basketball insiders widely refer to the 70s as the worst decade of NBA basketball. It's the least talked about, most would say it's the least exciting, and others would say the talent of the 70s was nowhere near the talent in the decades before and after. David Stern was born on September 22, 1942 in New York City, and he died January 1, 2020. He was born to Anna and William Stern. He also had a brother, Daniel Stern. He grew up in Teaneck, New Jersey. He was in the middle class. His family owned a deli. He went to Teaneck High School. He went to the University of Rutgers. He was never actually interested in basketball, and he got his bachelor's degree in 1963. David Stern made many important changes in the beginning of his career for the NBA. To the surprise of nobody, it was a drug testing policy. In a book by David Halberstam, he went in depth about this topic. He stated, quote, with a drug testing rule, the league in effect admitted that it had a problem and was now moving to correct it in conjunction with the players themselves. If a player came forward voluntarily, he would retain his salary and receive treatment. If he came forward a second time, he would get treatment but no salary. The third time, the player would be gone for life. This was seen as a strict regulation at first, but it was necessary to reduce the rampant drug use across the league. While there have been multiple instances of players getting permanently banned throughout the 1980s, some of whom were starters on playoff teams, it did in fact help the drug problem. Additionally, a second policy he passed was a different version of the salary cap. In the book, Halberstam said, quote, under the salary cap, the owners and players effectively became partners, the players getting 53% of all revenue. He became a lawyer in 1966. He got into basketball because he was representing the NBA in Robertson versus National Basketball Association, which was a case against the NBA by Robertson. Robertson made this case about free agency, which kept players tied to a single team, and free agent, which allowed players not to be on the same team so they could get off their rookie contract and make more money from other teams paying them. The NBA felt Stern would be a great hire, so they hired him to be the vice president. He became the commissioner of the NBA when Larry O'Brien stepped down from the spot of commissioner. The NBA thought Stern would be a great fit because he was already the vice president. The NBA started getting more popular with Magic Johnson and Larry Bird, but a big moment was the drafting of Michael Jordan. The Chicago Bulls picked Michael Jordan of the University of North Carolina. The main event in Stern's career was the Dream Team. In 1988, the U.S. lost the Olympics with amateurs. The head of FIBA decided that they would change the rule, and instead of amateurs, they would have pros. The U.S. was actually against that rule, even though they had just lost. So in 1992, the Dream Team was formed. They went to the Olympics in Barcelona. They were such a big deal, and everybody loved them. They won the gold medal game. In 1996, the percentage of international players was 5%. In 2020, it is roughly 20 to 25%. This team of all-stars is almost too good. Some think that we could go back to the cleats and spend two years. I think then we ought to ban the uh, African runners from the 10,000 meters because they make it look so easy as well. Uh, <laughs> this is about our best. And this is wonderful for the sport of basketball. I on the bench is taking pictures. And I said, wow, we are having a fest over here. Wrap around pass to Beckham. Easy victory unless they're as if uh, the President of the United States was uh, in the midst of a, a caravan that was going through the streets. It was like the Beatles where there's thousands and thousands of people waiting. 
I had a chance to interview former NBA player Robert Baden. He went to Pike High School, he went to Indiana University, and he also went to University of Alabama in Birmingham. He was drafted in 2009 by the Charlotte Bobcats as the 54th pick. In your opinion, what do you think David Stern had the most impact on and why? I think he had the most impact on bringing Americans to the Olympics because it helps the international people see the American game better. Uh, and it, I feel like it kind of globalized the game. David Stern was known as a very polarizing person. Why do you think th this is? I think he was very polarizing because he was in position to make important decisions for people's lives. And uh, also he was in position to make not so important decisions in people's lives. So he was polarizing in that aspect. And I think that was why, because of the position he was in. Did you ever get a chance to meet him? Yeah. No. If so, do you have any personal stories to share? If not, you have a friend who told you a story. Okay. I never got a chance to meet him, but uh, he called my name on draft night in 2009. So that felt great. It was a dream of mine that came true. Um, I don't really have any personal stories, but I heard he was a great man. When do you think of David Stern? Well, like, what do you think of when you first think of David Stern? So, so when I first think of David Stern, I think of the NBA draft. Why? Because it's changed so many people's lives. There's so many young boys that dream about playing in the NBA. So that night, I feel like it's very special. And I feel like that's what I think about when I think of David Stern. If you could meet him today, what, what would you get from him? I would try to get some knowledge from him on how to navigate life how to make important decisions and be in a position of power. And then I'll also just ask him some stuff about the NBA. Because, I mean, who, who knows better than the commissioner? David Stern was one of the greatest commissioners that any league has ever seen. Actually, at the All-Star Game in Orlando, when I had just announced HIV, David Stern allowed me to play in the game and he actually saved my life and he also saved millions of people's lives who were living with HIV around the world. He allowed players like myself and all these young players to be in households all over the world. Thank God we have uh, his vision was to have the NBA be a global game. And now look how many international players we have playing in the NBA today. It's made the game better because of that. David Stern died at the age of 77 and will be remembered by NBA players all around the world. Uh, what was my reaction? Um, it's, I mean, obviously, it's uh, you know, bittersweet. Um, you know, the bitter part of it is that we lost a, a great visionary. Uh, I think him and Dr. James Naismith is two of the most important people for the game of basketball. Um, obviously, Dr. Naismith, because he created the, the game. And then uh, David, his vision, his vision to make this game global. Um, I don't know how many people believed in that with him. I thought it was um, something that couldn't be done, but he made this game global where uh, this game is watched in over 200 countries, 200,000, I mean 200 countries, 250 countries over the world. In the end, David Stern had the greatest impact on the game of basketball around the world. Credit to...